the manufacturer's handbook or slash manual. Uh, everybody who has a car, please raise your hand. Everybody who owns a car, please raise your hand. There's some of our youngsters here that don't understand English. Uh, raise your hand if you own a car. Okay, so you'll all know what a manual is then, right? You'll know what a, a manual is. When you buy a car, I'm not talking about the gear stick manual, I'm talking about the book you get. So when something goes wrong with your car, you can look in that book and find out what's the problem. Yes or no? Yes. Amen. Amen. I want to just read something else from scripture at the moment because we're going to be dealing with God's manual, the Bible, God's word to us. Too often we listen to what men say and we just take it for granted that what they're saying is right, is truth. Okay? So, do we understand, do we accept that the Bible has come under tremendous attack by educated people, not only from outside the church, but from within the church also? Therefore, let us check who the Bible says is the author. Okay? The first scripture, I'd like you to turn with me to 2 Peter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 19 to 21. 2 Peter chapter 1. One, and the, the scripture says this, verse 19, we have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts, knowing this first, that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So we understand quite clearly that the Bible is the inspired word of God. Amen? The second one is, how much of the scripture are we, how much of the scriptures are we commanded to believe? Turn with me to 2 Timothy 3, verses 16 and 17. 2 Timothy 3, verses 16 and 17. Amen? Verse 16 says, all... What does all mean? All. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Verse 17, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works, completely endowed unto all good works. The Bible is God's word to us. God's manufacturer's handbook to us. The Bible. Now some people may tell you the truth and some people may t tell you what they think is the truth and they could really be, be deceiving us. Okay? So when we want to know something, what does the Bible say? We should go to the Bible and see what the Bible says. Amen? I have a question. Sounds like a very silly question, okay? Is the Bible sufficient for our times to prove, now listen carefully, to prove who is God in the relationship between us and God? Stupid question. Silly question? It is. Because God is God. We, are, we have got no chance of even being as holy as God is at this point in time. We are all fallen human beings. Saved by the grace of God. 
So I want to read Psalms 95 verse 6. Let's go there. Psalms 95 verse 6 because this these few uh, 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 scriptures that I'm going to give to you all will show us something as to who, who is God in this relationship, us or God. It's not us, we know that, but I want the Bible to speak for itself, amen? So let's go to Psalm 90, 95 verse 6. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. Proverbs 22, verse 2. The rich and the poor meet together. The Lord is the maker of of them all. Isaiah 17 verse 7. At that day shall a man look to his maker and his eyes shall have respect to the Holy One of Israel. Isaiah 45 verse 11. I feel so blessed this morning that I actually hear yeah, the pages turning. I, I certainly do. I know it takes a bit of time, but Isaiah 45, verse 11. Thus saith the Lord, the Holy One of Israel and his maker, ask me of things to come concerning my sons and concerning the work of my hands, command ye me. In all of these, we have seen that our maker is God. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, the seas and the fountains of water and all that in them is. God is our maker. And so this book called the Bible I think it's uh, something instructions before leaving earth. What was the first initial? Okay, Bible instructions before leaving earth. That's the Bible. You want to know what is true? Read your Bible. Ask questions. Read it some more. You may not fully understand it the first time you read it, but it, you'll get it if you study your Bible. You will know how to fix your problems. Because that's what the manual does. Tells you when you've done something wrong and it corrects you and puts you on the right path. Isaiah 51 verse 13. Amen. Amen. And forgettest the Lord thy maker that hath stretched forth the heavens and laid the foundations of the earth and has feared continually every day because of the fury of the oppressor as if, he, as if he were ready to destroy? And where is the fury of the oppressor? In this we see a call simply to trust, to, to, a call to trust in God and not man. God is our maker. He has formed us. He has given us life. He has showed us how to live. He tells us what, what we should not be doing. He tells us what we should be doing. And he tells us when we, when we do something that we're not supposed to be doing, we can still come to him and ask for forgiveness, and he will forgive us. Now, I left out a statement there that I should have said. God, we come to God and we ask for forgiveness, but included now, we must repent of that thing that we've done wrong. And then, what does God do? He forgives you. Hebrews 11 verse 10. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder 
and the maker is God. Do we get the, the point? Do we understand what I'm trying to express here? Is the Bible sufficient for our times to prove who is God? So therefore now, if we accept that God is the maker, God is our maker, God is our God, God is our, uh, he supplies all our needs. Therefore, the Bible has rightly been called the manufacturer's handbook. God, our maker, intended that creatures, that creatures he made to continually consult the book in confidence and to respond in obedience. Is that a fair statement? Now, surely our God included in his word or operating manual or manufacturer's handbook or better still, his word, the Bible, surely our maker included in his word every instruction needed for his creatures to function, to function holily, happily, and fruitfully. God has supplied that for us. And to live a holy life, we're going to read a few scriptures. Leviticus 19, verse 1 and 2. Leviticus 19 is the third book in the Bible. Leviticus 19. Leviticus 19, verses 1 and 2. And the Bible, God's word, God's manufacturer's handbook says to us, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, and say unto them, Ye shall be holy. Why? For I, the Lord, your God, am holy. Is that a direct instruction to us? Leviticus 11, verses 44 to 45. You all are there, so it shouldn't be long. Leviticus 11. And Leviticus says again, For I am the Lord your God. Ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves, and ye shall be holy. For I am holy. Neither shall ye defile yourselves with any manner of creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. For I am the Lord that bringeth you up out of the land of Egypt to be your God. Ye shall therefore be holy. Why? For God, for I am holy. God's word says that to us. Remember, I, I read first in the beginning, I read about um, uh, Peter and, and, and Timothy we have also a more sure word of prophecy. God's word is a more sure word of prophecy. Where unto you do well, you do well to take heed. 1 Thessalonians 2 verse 10. You see, by obeying God, whilst you're turning there, by obeying God's word, by keeping God's commandments, we can live a holy life. It is possible. Even though we are fallen human beings. Maybe I should say it this way. We should kick sin to the curb, right? That's what we should do. Reject it. Now I know it's not easy. I, I, I too make mistakes. But we must persevere and try to do that. 1 Thessalonians 2.10. Ye are witnesses and God also, how holily and justly and unblameably we behaved ourselves among you that believe. Paul tells the people how they have behaved. They have behaved in a holy manner because the God that they serve is a holy God. 
1 Peter 2, sorry, 1 Peter 1, verses 13 to 16. Remember, there are some very faithful men that were mentioned in Hebrews. Abel, Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Isaac. Did some of them make, make mistakes? Did some of them go wrong? Did some of them do a wrong, wrongful thing? The only one that I know, who, who, there's nothing that you can, you can talk about uh, uh, is Enoch. Enoch was so attached to God. He walked with God. And what did God do? He took him to heaven. One Peter one thirteen to sixteen. Wherefore gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ, as obedient children. As obedient children. How many of us, when our children are out of hand, chastise them? I think all parents do. Maybe do it a bit differently, but all parents will chastise their children when their children have done something wrong. Why should we not be chastised when we don't follow the word that we profess to follow? Why do we think that we, are, uh, we, we shouldn't be chastised? As obedient children, not fashioning ourselves according to the former lusts in ignorance, but as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, in all manner of, of conduct. Because it is written, be ye holy for I am holy. So when God calls us to be holy, will he enable us? And the church says, amen. And the church says, amen. Amen. Now let's look at a few verses that tell us that we can live a happy life. A happy life. We go to Job chapter 5 verse 17. Behold, happy is the man whom God corrected. Happy is the man whom God corrects. Therefore, despise not thou the chastening of the Almighty. Psalms 128 verse 2. For thou shalt eat the labor of thine hands. Happy shalt thou be, and it shall be well with thee. Psalms 144 verse 15. Happy is that people that is in such a case. Yea, happy is that people whose God is the Lord. Psalms 146, verse 5. Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God. Proverbs 3, 13 and 18. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, and the man that getteth understanding. She is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her, and happy, in is, and happy is everyone that retaineth her. Proverbs 14, verse 21. He that despiseth his neighbor sinneth, but he that hath mercy on the poor, happy is he. You know, Revelation 3.19 says very clearly, it's a rebuke in, 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 in guidance, but it says very clearly, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten and chasten. But be zealous, therefore, and, and repent. Proverbs 16, verse 20. He that handleth a matter wisely shall find good, and whoso trusted in the Lord, happy is he. Proverbs 28, verse 14. Happy is the man that feareth always, but he that hardeneth his heart shall fall into mischief. Proverbs 29, verse 18. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Now, when we talk about law, we always go 
simply to the Ten Commandments. But every word of God is inspired by God. Every word in the Bible is inspired by God. It's all his commandments. John 3, 15 to 17 says that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. You want to be saved? Yes, amen? Believe. Believe. When, his words, when, he, when the word of God says, this is what you must do, do it. When the word of God says, don't do it, then don't do it. If any man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch. John 15, sorry, I've jumped ahead of myself. My apologies. One Peter three, one Peter three, thirteen and fourteen. And who is he that will harm you if ye be followers of that which is good? But and if you suffer for righteousness' sake, happy are ye, and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. One Peter four fourteen. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, Happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon, upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. Amen? My friends, we can live and be happy in Jesus. Without Jesus, without his word, we are not happy and we are nothing. I know that sounds a bit strong, but I'm trying to encourage us to look to God's word for the answers that trouble us, that, for the answers that, that we, we need because of the troubling that we go through. Now, remember I mentioned three words. The last word is fruitfully. Fruitfully, I only got three verses, three, three uh, uh, um, scriptures to read. Fruitfully. Genesis 1, 28. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply. Who, who was God speaking to? Adam and Eve. Be fruitful and multiply. And replenish the earth and subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. God gave the earth to mankind. Unfortunately, mankind hasn't taken good care of it. John 15 verses 4, and 4 to 8. Turn with me there, please, quickly. John 15, 4 to 8, verses 4 to 8. The scripture says it very clearly, friends. Be fruitful and multiply. John 15, verses 4 to 8 says, Abide in me and I in you. This is Christ himself speaking, Jesus speaking. Abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me, in Christ. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, that's Jesus, without me, ye can do nothing. 
If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire. And they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and, I, and it shall be done unto you. Do you all, I don't know if you all remember, one of my brothers here, um, Brother Godfrey, he's done a sermon some time ago, and he spoke about ask. Ask. If you don't ask, you don't receive. Herein is my Father glorified. Okay, if ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye, what ye will, and it shall be done for you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. Fruit bearing is very important. We're all bearing fruits, but what fruits are we bearing? Colossians 1.10 That ye might walk worthily, that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. Be fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Friends, I want to read us some stuff from fundamentals, 27 fundamentals, or 28 fundamentals now. 27 fundamentals, a few things before I do the, the close section. These are extra notes that I have here. Well, I put extra notes there just for the sake that I, I remember them. Matthew 4.4 4 tells us that man shall not live by bread alone. Jesus placed the Bible above human tradition and opinions. Mark 7, 7 to 9, Jesus rebukes the Jews for setting aside the authority of Scripture. Matthew 21, 42, Jesus appeals to us to read the Scriptures, to read what the Scriptures say. Not what Tatan says, not what Chuka says, not what my sister Rachel says. What does God's Word say? John 5, 38 to and 46, Jesus strongly believed in the authority of the prophetic word. Luke 24, 25 to 27, O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Jesus was the fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecies. Isaiah 8, 20, to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. No light in them. Now, on page, on page 13 of the 27 fundamentals, I'm, I'm still using 27 because I, I got it from the 27 fundamental book. Now there's 28, okay? But it's the same uh, 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 page. This is what it says. The Bible must not be subjected to human norms. It is superior to all human wisdom and literature. Rather than judging the Bible, all, all will be judged by it, for it is the standard of character and the test of experience and thought. The Bible, both the Old and New Testaments, reveal the same God. The Old Testament serves as, as foundation of the new. It provides the keys to unlock the new, while the new explains the mysteries of the old. God graciously calls us to become acquainted with him by searching his word. For in it, we can find the rich blessings of the assurance of our salvation. Not in novels, not in any other book, but in scripture. We can discover for ourselves the profitability of the scripture. Remember that in the last days, uh, 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 
Many false prophets shall enter into the church. So, don't believe me. After all, you know, my surname is Crook. Don't believe me. But believe the word of God. Read it. Believe it. Apply it. God graciously calls us to be acquainted with him by searching his word. For in it, we can find the rich blessings of the assurance of our salvation. We can discover for ourselves the profitability of scriptures. 2 Timothy 3.16 says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. How much is all? Come on, I want you all to say it. How much is all? All. all. Another one in uh, uh, belief number one, the 27 fundamentals uh, believe um, the, the holy scriptures, both old and new, are the written word of God given by divine inspiration through holy men of God who spoke and wrote as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. In, in this word, God has committed to man the knowledge necessary for salvation. The holy scriptures are the infallible revelation of his will. They are the standard of character, the test of experience, the authoritative revealer of doctrines, and the trustworthy record of God's acts in history. Amen? In Testimonies, uh, uh, Volume 6, Section 3, page 132, In God's word is found wisdom unquestionable, inexhaustible, wisdom that originated not in the finite but in the infinite mind. But much of that which God has revealed in his word is dark to men because the jewels of truth are buried beneath the rubbish of human wisdom and tradition. To many, to many, the treasures of the word remain hidden because they have not been searched for with earnest perseverance until the golden precepts were understood. The word must be searched in order to purify and prepare those who receive it to become members of the royal family, children of the heavenly king. The study of God's word should take the place of the study of those books that have led minds into mysticism and away from the truth. Its living principles woven into our lives will be our safeguard in the trials and temptations. Amen? It, its divine instruction is the only way to success. As the test comes to every soul, there will be apostasies. Some will prove to be traitors, heady, high-minded, and self-sufficient, and will turn away from the truth, making shipwreck of faith. Why? Why? Because they did not live by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. They did not dig deep and make their foundation sure. When the words of the Lord through his chosen messengers are brought to them, they murmur and think the way is made too straight. In the sixth chapter of John, we read that of some who were thought to be disciples of Christ, but who, when the plain truth was presented to them, were displeased and walked no more with him. In like manner, these superficial students also will turn away from Christ. Hard, isn't it? Difficult, right? But it's the truth. We are living in the times of the end. Look what we have to contend with. Hey? You'll, 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 you'll watch the news, you'll read the papers, you'll see it happening every day. I don't have to even give, that, 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 give it any uh, fuel. You'll know. Friends, In conclusion, God has not overlooked any possible problem of malfunction which might befall us 
nor has he failed to provide complete instructions and the appropriate remedy. Suppose the descendants of Adam became angry, frustrated, fearful, anxious, insecure, or lonely. Suppose they feel misused and abused or useless or lacking in purpose. Let us seek counsel from the manufacturer's handbook. What book is that? And the church says, amen. In which their maker has provided complete operating instructions. Let us turn to Christ who saves from the penalty and power of sin. Let us turn to Christ who indwells and empowers and let us turn to Christ to whom the saints and martyrs throughout history turned and whom they always found sufficient. Let us turn to Christ of whom David says in Psalms 56, 1 to 4, be merciful to me, be merciful unto me, O God, for man would swallow me up. He fighting daily oppresseth me. Mine enemies would daily swallow me up, for they be many that fight against me. O thou most high, what time I am afraid, I trust in thee. In God I will praise his word. In God I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. I'm sure some of you all know Proverbs uh, chapter 3 verses 5 and 6 off by heart, right? Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Friends, what more do we need? We have Jesus. We claim to be his followers. Then let's follow him. Jesus is coming again, friends. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to a place, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. And verse 4. And where I am going and whither I go, ye know, and the way, ye know. Amen? Jesus is coming. In Jeremiah 6, 16, it says, we must ask for the old paths, wherein is the good way, and walk therein, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. In 2 Chronicles 7, 14, this is a strong one, but it's a truthful one. If my people, Seventh-day Adventists, we claim to be God's people, don't we? Yes or no? Amen? Amen. If my people which are called by my name, this is the hard thing for us, shall humble ourselves, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, not my face, Jesus' face, God's face, and seek my face and turn, turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Amen? Is the Bible sufficient for our times? And the answer for me is yes. Amen. Let us return to God's word for our encouragement, for our strength, for our, uh, for our everything. Let us turn to God's word. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let us all stand as we sing hymn number 532. Day by day and with each passing moment, strength I find to meet my trials here. 
Trusting in my Father's wise bestowment, I've no cause for worry or for fear. He whose heart is kind beyond all measure gives unto each day what he deems best. Lovingly is part of pain and pleasure, mingling toil with peace and rest. Every day the Lord himself is near me with a special mercy for each hour. All my cares he fain would bear and cheer me, he whose name is Counselor and Power. The protection of his child and treasure is a charge that on himself he laid. As your days, your strength shall be in measure. This the pledge to me he made. Help me then in every tribulation so to trust thy promises O Lord that I lose not faith's sweet consolation offered me within thy holy word help me Lord when toil and trouble meet him and to take us from our father's end one by one the days the moments fleeting till I reach the promised land our heavenly father Lord we thank you for your word for your word is true your word is life Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Everything, Father, that we've needed, you've supplied to us. Help us, please. Forgive us for our sin and our wrongdoing. Help us, please, that we can worship you with clean hands and a clean heart. Help us, Lord, that as we leave this place, we will take Jesus with us in our hearts. Then we can live holily, happily and fruitfully. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen.